Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In our build up uh, to the Minara Business Awards uh, on the 28th of October, inshallah, which uh, Hilal TV will be, st- will be uh, you know, li- uh, live broadcasting, or there'll be a live broadcast on Hilal TV for that, inshallah. We've done a few interviews with some of the finalists, and today, alhamdulillah, I'm here with Mohammed Amra, uh, a multi franchisee of Pam Golding and someone who's got property in his blood. Mohammed, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this interview on Hilal TV. Thank you for having me. Now, we're sitting here at your offices uh, in Durban. Uh, we just commented earlier about the lovely bird uh, sounds. Um, it's a lovely day in Durban and you're looking nice and relaxed. But, uh, you know, what I'd like to understand a little bit is, you know, you know, in, in, in number one, Alhamdulillah, you know, being a, a finalist uh, for the Minara Business Awards, um, and being an icon, I think, of, 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 of people wanting to go on the entrepreneurship and the business journey. I'd like to know a little bit about your story and getting to where we are today, inshallah. Okay, so after my mystic, I did a few, I went to study medicine, surprisingly. And then I did not complete that. And then I joined a company in Newcastle called North City Wholesalers. And I spent 10 years with them, and I, that's where I learned a lot of my uh, entrepreneurship and my business, uh, uh, the way to run a business. And from my ex-bosses, uh, they were very hands-on, and they were very uh, corporate, forward-thinking people. I learned quite a bit uh, with them, and... 10, 11 years ago, I bought my first franchise in Kuchipstan. You must remember, in 2008, there was a huge property-related crash in uh, the world. And, uh, you know, when I was buying the franchise, a lot of people did say that, you know what, I'm going into something whereby it's you're not going to make it, and it's a difficult industry at that moment. And I decided just to follow my heart Your gut and my gut, my gut, and uh, continue the journey. So it was one of the smallest territories that I bought in the entire group, but from one river to the next. And what made you get into property? Like, where, where, where did you see the opportunity? So I did do quite a few projects for my ex-company okay. and managed a few of the properties okay. and did the project management for the company. Wow. So from there, I was able to grasp a lot of legality on property, wow. to engage with uh, municipalities. Mm. And I had that, that, but you know, it's as you go along, it's a journey that you learn every day. Mm. And every day you are learning something. It's not that you, with the laws, it's changing every day. Legalities are changing, and it's a journey. So it's not that you learned and knew everything and joined. I I tick the box to own a franchise, uh, but every day you learn something. Mm. And uh, subsequent to that, when I joined Pam Golding, uh, a lot of people were exiting the industry, and that's where I saw the opportunity to <coughs> pick up the few crumbs that's left around and build from there. And the following year or two, I was the franchisee of the year. Wow. And subsequent to that, uh, for the last 10 years, I was franchisee of the year for about six years. And uh, then I bought another franchise in Pine Town. And from there, I grew to Westville. And then uh, from South Coast, I extended my territory in the South Coast, so I own from Michelumi right to Margate and right through to Hardin, huge territories. And in Durban, we've got from Durban Beach right through to uh, Westmead, New Germany, so huge territories. We also do Chatsworth. Uh, and, and and tell me, I mean, that's a, an, an, an unbelievable story, but... You know what we need to learn in our businesses generally is scale. So you 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 tested. I think from what I understand, with Chile it worked, or that you know that Margate area. But how were you able, and what lessons could you give people looking to scale businesses? Because Shukar Alhamdulillah, you seem to have scaled your business very very nicely over 
you know, it's 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 a relatively short period of time, uh, twelve or, or thirteen years. I think the most important thing in the business that we in is service. Mm. You have to be service orientated, and from there, a lot of other things follow. And uh, to to understand economy, to understand how people are thinking with property, there's always people dying, people be, the divorce takes place, and people unfortunately become in, in debt. So when that happens, there's always an opportunity to sell a house or buy a house mm. for those who have fun. So you just need to identify those markets and those places. And the biggest thing is to build relationships with people. Mm. And with relationships that I've built with people, I was able to grow. And that's not a once-off relationship. And it's not about money. Yes. You don't ever work for money, right? Money is an enabler. You need money for living. But that won't make you wealthy. Mm. Wealth is today, the most important wealth is relationship. Mm. That you could, people, when they want to buy or sell, they will contact you or they'll contact your team because of you. I, I I love what you said, and I think there's some great uh, you know business lessons to be learned there. Relationships, people. Let's talk a little bit about people. Obviously, building a business like this, you, you need to have a great relationship with, with with your colleagues and 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 people that work with you. Talk to us a little bit, uh, bit about that and how you manage to build, motivate, nurture your teams over the year. Because I think you know the biggest part of a property business is the sales team, right? Um, give us a few lessons that you've learned. I think importantly. You have business and think into business acumen. It's EQ, right? The, the reason you need that is during any business journey, you're going to have challenges. Mm. It's you challenges. You've got labor challenges. You've got cash flow challenges. You've got there's so many challenges that you have. And if you do not have a good mindset, you will not be able to overcome those challenges. With that, you need the right people around you. And you don't need people that will demotivate you, suppress your thoughts. You need people who will build on it. Mm. And with that, you need the right people. So in my circle, I keep very motivated people mm. that I can pick up the phone and we talk about only about how to motivate each other and yes. how to I'll explain to them my challenges. I have a business coach uh, as well, uh, Jamal Saeed, and you know we we engage a lot to, and he guides us, and he guides me and my team. I have a team now, almost ninety people. Alhamdulillah. So, good business as well. A lot of businesses fail because they don't have the organizational structure. Me, I can't. I'm not an admin person, so I'm employed admin. Uh, managers, I've got a financial manager, I've got CAs working for me, I've got regional managers, so that I can do what I do best with people and build those relationships. And that, that, that's where the people factor comes in. And where to from here, Mohammed? Obviously, you know, um, uh, success, shukar alhamdulillah, has built success for you. But obviously, you're always looking to the next thing. And I think, you know, that's what a business leader needs to do in this day and age is they say that a business leader doesn't need to plan for this year. They need to be planning for next year. And I think you've got, you know, what you've told us is that you've got a lovely team in place that deals with, uh, you know, the operations of the business. But you are dealing with the people aspect, but also probably the future of the business. What is the future of the business? business look like? So currently, and it's not out there, but I'll share it with you, uh, we've been approved, well I've been approved uh, to uh, uh, open the first pan building in Dubai. Mashallah. So I've secured the entire Middle East, so the first office will be in Dubai, the second will be in Abu Dhabi, the third in Doha, Qatar, and the third, fourth one will be in Saudi. But in the new developments on the north, uh, near a place called Neom, yes, many people would have seen that on uh, social media. So we'll be hands-on with those developments with uh, uh, with the Saudi uh, uh, developers. 
But our first office in the next few months and uh, will be in uh, Dubai. So it will be the first time going in Dubai. You will be able to come down to our Florida Road office in Durban and buy your property in Dubai. Wow. And I think that's innovation, right? That's you you taking it to the next level and, 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 and I think making it accessible uh, to, to, to your clients. So I think a lot of people need comfort. Yes. And um, Dubai is a growing economy. A lot of immigration is happening there. Uh, with the instability of the world, uh, especially with the war in Russia and Ukraine, there's a lot of opportunities that... Uh, happening in the stable environment. Uh, so I think that opportunity here, uh, in the last 10 years, they've had good growth. Uh, I had this opportunity five, eight years ago. And if I look, if I took that, you know, everyone say Dubai has been a crash and so on and so forth. But I think it's a, you need diversification. Mm. You're not saying to leave South Africa, but you need a diversification. You need a hedge. You need, to, you need to hedge your bets today. Uh, if you are able to have that hedge, uh, should anything happen here, you have some security somewhere else. Yes, definitely. Mohammed, well done again on being uh, one of the Minara Business Awards finalists. Uh, we wish you all the best, inshallah. And any parting words, you've given us some great lessons as I've continued to allude to in the interview. Um, but any parting shots and words of advice to, uh, you know, would-be entrepreneurs or people looking to get involved in the business world, inshallah? So I think in real estate, there's always opportunity, right? If anyone wants to join or wants to learn real estate or doors are open, they should contact me or my team. And, and you know, it's a, it's a very... Uh, everyone who comes into real estate and who makes it, right, say that they would have rather done it a long time yes. ago. But like everything, there's a lot of work. Nothing is easy. And there's no shortcut to uh, success. I have a last question that I've just thought about. And I know the, 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 the viewers and anyone watching this will, will be keen to understand it. I've done a lot of research recently into you know, entrepreneurs and what the best age of entrepreneurship is. And obviously, there's diverse views. But you entered the business world as an entrepreneur on your own fairly late. Um, do you think that made you a better entrepreneur or businessman having known and understood and trained, as you said, in a very nice environment prior to that? Do you think it made you better at what you are today? I think I take my journey from the time I started my previous job with North City. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we worked there and I worked there was part of my journey to be my, you know, my entrepreneurship. So it's not that I started late. I would say the day I stepped in there was my start of my journey. Alhamdulillah, and I think that's a lesson is there's no, uh, there's no right time, uh, as you would say, and there's no science behind the time as long as you start. And I think that's the most important thing at some level, you know, inshallah, try and get involved in your own business or as an entrepreneur. And I think we've got no better role model uh, than I'm sitting with Mohammed Amra from Pam Golding. Thank you so much for your time today. And as I said, we're wishing you all the best and we'll see you at the Business Awards on the 28th of October, inshallah. Thank you, sir. Pleasure speaking to you.